Good morning. It is a chilly Friday morning. The babies are now six days old. They'll be six days old tonight around 11 o'clock. So uh, I've made a mistake on the last video. I apologize that <laughs> they're all yelling at me. Uh, I made it. I forgot to tell you guys about their weight. So um, the first couple of days, their weight was actually really good. They were gaining in between 0.3 and 0.5 pounds uh, per day, um, which is average and really good. And then by the third day, two of them started to slack off just a little bit. Um, the fourth day, a little bit more. So yesterday, we just made the decision to start supplementing two of the babies. I also noticed that Leia's just not quite as attached to two of them. The um, Actually, it was the last two that were born. She had a good 40, 45 minutes that she had of loving, licking, cleaning, bonding with the first boy that was born. Um, and she didn't really have that with the other two. So uh, she'll let them nurse, but I noticed she doesn't let them nurse for a very long time. She'll let the first one nurse pretty much as long as he wants. He always has a full belly. He's gaining weight wonderfully, but the other two, not quite so much. And even sometimes she's even a little too rough with them. Um, so we're keeping a close eye on that to be sure that, you know, she doesn't hurt them, of course, but we started to supplement them. Um, I had a friend who gave me some uh, milk. She has an, a Nubian doe who, uh, um, unfortunately had a baby born prematurely. She was a first freshener, so she's got a little bit of milk. So we're supplementing with a little bit of goat milk from her. And then now I'm starting to mix it with whole milk. I'm not using a formula. Um, you know, goat formula is not a terrible thing. Make sure it's formulated for specifically for goat kids. But um, you tend to have less issues if you just use whole cow milk. There are some other recipes that tell you to put buttermilk in it and some other things, but I'm just going to use plain old cow's milk. So I'll show you guys the babies and how they're doing. And there they are. Aren't they precious? Actually, little Mr. Leia. And you see what I mean? She does not like anybody messing with her food, but unusually... That boy, she typically lets him, um, you know, smell the grain. He's even been licking the grain a little bit. And I have to pick their stall out because there's, Leia's got a little bit of clumpy poo, but I did warm her. Um, after birth, you do need to warm your dough um, with a warmer, uh, whether it be a natural warmer or a chemical warmer, whatever your choice is, uh, you do need to warm your dough because the stress of birth can cause a parasite bloom and uh, you don't want to wind up with issues. So she's been wormed. Now see that and just telling them no, no, that's okay. But if she was to butt them really bad or anything, then we'd have an issue. But they're bouncing around and happy and healthy. And they're starting to nibble on hay a little bit. You see that one over there, the little girl? She's starting to nibble on the hay. Actually, they've been nibbling on hay for like two days. And Leia, be nice. I think this was just a little bit of a rough, crazy birth for her. I mean, we had to pull the kids and help, even help with the other ones. So pretty much she had to have assistance for all of them. So it's been a little crazy. So I wanted to really quick talk a little bit, since I am supplementing the baby, an important thing to um, understand is, you know, how much do you have to feed, how much does a baby goat need? Now, obviously, whenever they're on their mother, you're not measuring and they're eating until they're satisfied, um, you know, and mama can help a little bit with that and tell them, okay, that's enough. But when you're feeding a bottle, you do need to measure to be sure that they're getting enough food. Um, if you have, say something happened to the dough or she is just not allowing you to, to, you know, give the, um, to let the baby latch on it all in the beginning, um, with a newborn within the first, uh, 24 hours, you want to try to get 10% of their body weight in colostrum. Okay. So milk the mom, um, you know, and actually, and I, I hate to explain this, but if, if let's say the mother died in childbirth, you can still milk that udder. Uh, and get the colostrum out because it's very, very important for that baby's survival that they get the colostrum. It is very rich, it is uh, high in nutrients, and it has antibodies and things that are essential for that baby. So 
you know, and, and it's also important to, if you're able to, to milk a little bit out and maybe save it for the next year or for the next kidding, if you have a complication where, um, you can't, you, you can't get colostrum or maybe she doesn't have anything. Maybe she didn't develop an udder and she doesn't have anything, right? Okay. So, uh, with that being said, 10% of body weight, uh, in the first 24 hours with colostrum, then we go, um, uh, to your milk. Uh, you can use whole milk. You can use milk replacer. We did, we've done milk replacer in the past. We're using whole milk this time. I think I've already mentioned that. Um, but we try to work up slowly to, we try to work it up to about 20% body weight. So weigh them and then convert it to ounces. Okay. And then come up with 20%. So right now ours are looking at about 32 ounces a day per their weight. Um, and you know, just kind of watch the baby because if they seem super now, if they seem super hungry after, uh, you know, you're done feeding a bottle, kind of feel their belly. If their belly feels full, then they're fine. It, and and as long as they're gaining weight steadily, if not, you may have to add a little more. Some are a little bit slower eaters. Some are really fast eaters. Um, you know, the key thing is is that you don't want to underfeed and you don't want to overfeed. But we want to shoot for right around twenty percent um, in the beginning for the first. Um, so a couple of weeks, you do need to feed them every about four hours. Uh, some people will do it around the clock. I don't feed mine around the clock. I will feed them a, a late night bottle, probably like 10, 11 o'clock at night, and then I'll feed them an early morning bottle. So they'll have a, a little bit of time where they're not getting a bottle at night, um, but throughout the day, we do give every four hours. Now with these two, they're getting fed three times a day because they are still able to nurse off their mom. So I don't have to be quite so intense as if it was a bottle baby. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, I'm sure you can Google lots of other suggestions on bottle feeding, but I just wanted to give you, you know, some of the ones that I have. And um, for that, we'll just go on to watch a little bit of the babies and we'll see you guys next time. You got to feed it to him. You know, hold on to him and get him. <laughs> See, she's just not letting them, those two drink as much. She'll nurse them occasionally, but not, not enough. You're not getting breakfast yet, Miss Woman. I mean, you know Mr. Bouncy. He's not that bouncy. That's you up. <laughs> we have a cat mm -hmm. on the door. Oh, my God.